Welcome to the second day of EMI RMP exam prep course. Yesterday we did talk about some terms related to risk management and we tried to create an aura of how things work together. Uh, we tried to differentiate between risk issue and problem. Uh, we tried to explain that threat and opportunities are also risks, positive and negative uh, risks. And then we also talked about hazard, crisis, and disaster. I think these basic definitions or basic terminologies must be clear in your mind as if you do not confuse it later. Anyways, we uh, also refer to some of the material from the RMP handbook and uh, the exam content, and we were supposed to be doing the exam content today. So let me give you an overview of uh, the PMI standards first and then we'll move on to the exam content. We'll, we'll talk about it in detail. Right, about PMI standards, uh, I hope you understand that PMI has got, now they have two guides. Uh, PMI um, basic guide, the foundation guide is a guide to the project management body of knowledge which you all understand both of you are PMP and therefore there is no misunderstanding about it but this was the first standard and this was the foundation standard on which today the whole tree of more than 40 standards is basically standing on this PMB OK guide very recently PMI has also come up with a business analysis guide and that is called the PMI guide to business analysis and the reason for having this relationship between business analysis and project management was that the job of business analyst and project management manager has a lot of overlap. Rather, I would say business analyst starts working much before project manager was ever born. And after the project has been delivered, the job of business analyst continues. But while the project is happening, business analyst has his own responsibilities regarding the project and project manager naturally is responsible for the scope of the project in other words i would say a business analyst is responsible for the product scope of the project and project manager is responsible for the project scope of the project so anyways these are the two pmi guides uh, but if we talk about the foundational standards the we have got a number of standards so far which have appeared from PMI. Uh, I will, uh, you know, tell you the foundation standards later, but uh, first of all, let's talk, talk, talk about all the standards PMI has come up with. There is a category after the guide, there is a category of the standard. There are five standards of that kind. We have a, the standard for program management. We have the standard for portfolio management. We have the standard for organizational project management. These top three items, they are linked to the foundation standards. Meaning what? If you join it together with PMB, okay, that forms the list of foundation standards. But anyways, what are the other standards? Very recently, PMI has released two new standards, which earlier used to be practice standards, not the standard. Now they have become the standard, meaning what? That they have qualified to to appear as a standard now previously they were just practice standard which is a lower status so earned value management has recently been released as the standard and the latest one is the risk management the standard for risk management is no more for project risk management it is for portfolios programs and projects it applies to them all so this is probably uh, something which is of more concern to us uh, as far as the exam changes are concerned, I am not really much worried about it because most of the things given in this standard, in the new standard even, is not very different from the previous one. The only thing is it has now more coverage. It is not only talking about projects, but it's also talking about programs and portfolios. Therefore, there is absolutely no harm in studying this standard in detail for the preparation of this exam. I, I can assure you, you will be benefited, you will not be damaged. <clears throat> then the core standards, the foundational, uh, I mean the core standards of PMI, which uh, I just told you, the guide 
for project management body of knowledge, program management, portfolio management, and the organizational project management. These four books put together are called the core standards of PMI because this encompasses the discipline of project management, program management, portfolio management, and all of these three things put together are called organizational project management. Um, so this is what uh, the core standard is. But there was, uh, there used to be another core standard which was included in it, which is no more. That is, that was called as organizational project management maturity model. Well, you may call it a standard, or you may call it a maturity model, but there was a maturity model of that sort which was we used to call it OPM3 organizational project management maturity model OPM3 went through two editions and then it vanished because probably PMI has outsourced this uh, maturity model to some private firm and now they are authenticating and certifying assessors and auditors for organizational project management which includes the maturity of an organization in projects and programs and portfolios is being assessed by those people who are certified by them previously pmi used to get people certified but now this is outsourced therefore probably they have removed this standard from the list of pmi core standards okay so this is the complete list of all the guides and all the standards there are a total uh, of seven uh, one if i do not include uh, opm3 we have only seven next level of standards is a practice standard we have a number of practice standards like we have practice standard for scheduling we have practice standard for project estimation the recently released one is a project estimation then we have uh, we had a practice standard for earned value management which has now grown into the standard for earned value management which i just shown uh, have shown you there used to be a pro practice risk uh, sorry practice standard for project risk management which has now grown into the standard for risk management in pro portfolio programs and projects. Uh, then uh, there is a standard for practice standard for uh, project configuration management. Again, a very interesting standard which uh, takes care of uh, uh, the versioning and documenting uh, all the doc products and documents uh, or, or artifacts of a project, a program or a portfolio for that matter. Uh, practice standard for estimation, uh, the older version uh, has now been replaced by the newer version shown on top uh, we have the practice standard for work breakdown structure these are the seven practice standards and there is you can call it a practice standard or you can call it something else but generally we call it pmcdf project manager competency development framework now this is something like a maturity model you see maturity models are there to assess the maturity of an organization uh, organizations have maturity people do not have maturity as far as the people are concerned they have competencies so a project manager needs to assess his competency and then improve it an organization needs to assess its maturity and then naturally improve it so if an organization develops and improves on the uh, on on its uh, you know uh, maturity it gains higher levels of maturity. Similarly, PMCDF talks about a project manager's competency and it talks about a number of things in project manager competency which has somehow been uh, included into the, uh, uh, the talent triangle which uh, you might have known, uh, which includes the technical knowledge and the uh, strategic and business knowledge and all that, leadership and skill, other you know, soft skills. So all of these things put together builds up the competency of a project manager and this framework provides you enough material to assess yourself or assess your subordinates for that matter and apply corrections in their competency. So you may include it in practice standards and you may not but this could be a separate thing as a PMCDF. Then we have got practice guides. We have a number of practice guides, about eight practice guides here. Uh, we have a practice guide for uh, business analysis for practitioners this was there when there was no uh, pmi guide for business analysis so people used to consult this and i still find this book is to to be a fantastic book for business analysis uh, another companion book to that is 
a practice guide for requirement management this is also related to business analysis as well as project management so requirements management relates to both and this is also a very good standard um, <clears throat> recently pmi had come up with two other standards one was the implementing organizational project management a practice guide and the other is governance of portfolio programs and projects actually these both of these are contributing towards the latest standard for organizational project management but i like this book governance on portfolio programs and project because for the first time somebody started talking about governance in a formal way so this is uh, i usually refer this book for uh, if uh, if i want to learn more about governance uh, you uh, you might know that when pmbok was released the sixth edition was released it came uh, um, along with another practice guide and that was agile practice guide this was built into the pmb okay like you know it was binded into the pmb okay initially but then they separated it agile practice guide is a separate practice guide it is not part of pmb okay as such uh, and it is not part of pmp exam but agile practice guide is a fantastic guide for the latest tailoring trends of today where mostly in software and it industry agile is being used then we have got navig navigating complexity you understand all the projects which are being handled um, uh, i mean which have been described in pmbok and other other standards they we are usually talking about a simple and a single project we are not talking about multiple projects or we are not talking about complex environment because uh, the rules the good practices shown in pmbok might apply to an average size of a project but uh, it may not be true for a very complex environment so to talk about more complexity they came up with a practice guide of navigating complexity so there are certain indicators about how to deal with uh, complexity in projects uh, so this navigating complexity guide is for that uh, <clears throat> a very uh, interesting and long awaited thing which was managing change in organization we knew about it we used to talk about it um, and i just discussed in the previous lecture also how change is brought into an organization do you remember i talked about the issue and problem and growing into you know need for change and ultimately you are giving birth to a project to <clears throat> as a change uh, initiative to realize something which you uh, you do not have so <clears throat> this book this practice guide talks about the managing change in organization so the, the discipline of change management is also now within the grasp of project management so we have you know captured the area of business analysis we have gone into change management we have gone into agile and a lot many things we are spreading pmi is spreading around and you will find that most of the functioning of an organization would be governed by organizational project management uh, another uh, latest of all of these practice standards is the benefit realization management and i hope you understand that benefit realization is associated with all change related initiatives no matter it is a project it is a program or whatever for projects you may not as a project manager you may not be responsible for realizing the benefits but at least you are responsible for the output for the deliverable for the product but later on how much benefit you want to get realized out of it Uh, may be the responsibility of sponsor of someone else not the project manager but still this is a mature fact that projects do realize ultimately some benefits as far as the programs are concerned they are more visible to be linked with the benefit realization because they are not concerned about the product itself they are more concerned about the benefit realization therefore programs uh, do not have specific products in mind but the long term benefits which they need to realize by unification of all the related projects which are being conducted under a program so this all is a very long discussion but generally this is how it is then there is yet another category this is called pmbok extensions actually many industry sectors like construction government department of defense and software uh, engineering they all had Uh, at some point in time <coughs> requested pmi <coughs> they uh, agreeing that pmbok is a adoptable standard and they they have all adopted it and this is useful for them but 
they wanted certain other items certain other good practices to be recorded specific to their industry in addition to pmb okay therefore there was a need for developing these pmb okay extensions so these pmb okay extensions are to be read in extension to or in addition to pmb okay pmb okay stands valid all of it for construction for government for software for department of defense everywhere but uh, in addition to pmb okay there are certain special specialized uh, good practices in construction which are given in the construction extension to pmb okay there are specialized government good practices uh, which are given in the government extension for pmb okay and software extension contains the software engineering good practices uh, the Department of Defense extension was created by PMI on the request of Department of Defense USA but and it was it used to be open to all but uh, after some time they had restricted it this is no more available for the general public therefore this standard is not visible to us so we only understand and know that there are three extensions right now and there is a tendency that other industries may also request PMI and as and when these requests come PMI may come up with more extensions in different industries or areas. So with this discussion, we find that in business analysis so far, there are three related standards which have come up. One is uh, the latest one is the PMI guide to business analysis, which is now the de facto standard for business analysis. And uh, you prepare for your PBA exam from there. Then we have a practice guide for business analysis for practitioners. We have a requirement management guide, a practice guide. This is for uh, business and analysts as well as project managers, but more likely it is used by the business analysts. So th these are the three standards I can find uh, which relate to business analysis. Then risk, which is our subject. Uh, we have a standard for risk management now, as I said, this is applicable to portfolios, programs and projects, although it used to be a practice standard for project risk management and as far as your exam is concerned you probably should be uh, linking to to that a practice standard for project risk management but i see no harm if you can refer to the the standard for risk management in portfolio programs and projects there is one and the same thing not not much of difference basically you you just need to understand how the things are in risk management otherwise there is no problem you can still pass the exam as far as earned value is concerned, we know there is no certification so far uh, by PMI on earned value, but they have two standards. The one is the DA standard for earned value management, the other is uh, practice standard for earned value management. Naturally, the practice standard is superseded by the DA standard. In the field of organizational project management, uh, there, uh, there were two practice standards implementing organizational project management and governance in portfolio programs and projects. Uh, now, the combined effect of these have been built into the standard for organizational project management. So we have got three uh, standards so far in the field of OPM. So if you want to put it all together, this is the whole wide picture. You see there is a huge list of these standards and uh, naturally you are only concerned right now about the PMBOK and the risk management standard. But I would still insist, I would still insist that you must go through, you must develop a habit of reading, read through all of these standards, you know, not for any exam, not for any other thing, just for your own wisdom, just for your own knowledge. You must read all through all these things. And if you are a PMI member, naturally you have access, free access to all of these standards. You can download them, you can read them at your layer. Please make it a habit to read them through. As far as I'm concerned, I probably am not really very comfortable reading from uh, from uh, the computer from online. So I always love to have the original books. As soon as a new book is released by PMI, a new standard is released, uh, no matter how costly it is, I make it a personal mission to buy it. So these new standards like the risk management thing and the benefit management and all that, which are new books, I, I am going to be um, no, requesting someone to bring these books from for me if anyone goes abroad to any PMI event or seminar. Uh, rather, I will request Khayam if you, you can take note of that. And uh, if you see anyone, uh, the president or anyone going from Islamabad chapter 
to any PMI event, please let me know as if I can pay him and I can get these books, which are the latest standards. So this is about the standards. So any comments so far? You can raise your hand. Welcome, Shahid Saab. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And uh, GJ. Sorry, sir. I could not make it. Yeah. <laughs> no problem. No problem. We uh, we were just talking about the different standards of PMI. We did not do anything much. So now you are here, and now we will we will be moving on. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, Khayam, yeah, yeah. I'm with you since last 10-15 minutes. Yeah. Wonderful. Wonderful. Khayam, anything from your side? Yeah. These are all good. Thank you very much. Uh, do you know of anyone who is oh. uh, going to be attending the PMI uh, event in uh, EMEA event or uh, North America event? Is president, sure, the going, president to is going uh, to the event in Dublin, which is this week? Okay. Eko, he is going there. Or uh, October, mein he is going to be uh, going to the US. I might also go. But okay. because I am doing the conference for October, so maybe my share is a little 50 50. Hai. But okay. he's definitely going to, closer to the time. I will ask you to give me the list of the books, okay. and inshallah, we'll get you. Okay, but you have to tell me that 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 you both of us are going hamlayenge otherwise i'll ah. ask the president to bring ya to online mil sakti hai kitab aur ya phir udhar pmi ke idhar conference mein milegi so in any case i'll take the list from you jab when it's convenient for you mumkin hai usse pehle hi hum aapke liye le le otherwise event se to inshallah aayi jayenge ha ah, ha ah, wonderful wonderful acha ji mohit aap uh, any comment from your side yes, sir i'm good i'm good okay 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 let me move uh, move on uh, to uh, some of the portion we had already talked about yesterday, so I'll just skip it quickly. Uh, that was about RMP. We, I have told you uh, that uh, you have to download the risk management handbook. This is how it looks like. I hope you can see that. On the right is the risk management handbook. On the left is the examination content outline for risk management professional. Right? So both of these things you should download. And remember, the handbook has recently been revised in 1st March, 1st April 2019. But the core syllabus is same since 2012. It was published in 2012 and the core syllabus has not changed. Right? So, uh, there is not much of difference in the exam. And uh, yes, one thing, if you think that it is going to be on the old standard, 6th edition, 4th edition. Somebody was yesterday asking me that uh, he needs 4th edition of PMB, okay, because uh, risk management exam is based on 4th edition. That is wrong. That is absolutely wrong. Risk management, although the syllabus remains the same, but it is now based on the 6th edition, right? You should be preparing from the 6th edition and the latest standard in risk, whatever it is, right? To just look at the list of the uh, content and you will find out what, what topics you need to prepare as far as a certification is concerned any whenever PMI feels that there is a demand in the market uh, naturally people approach PMI that we need this certification or we need people of this skill level so PMI if uh, if they if they find there is a need in the market they get they hire a third party to conduct the market research and market research not only conducts a feasibility whether this certification should be floated or not but it also collects all the need and requirement of the industry what kind of a professional they need certified as so say we are going for risk management profession and it is a new certification and it's uh, somebody has suggested as a certification this kind of certification should be there so they will go down to the market uh, market they will approach the market and they will collect the data and ask them uh, what should be the characteristics of a risk manager in your organization? So that's how from globally they will collect this data and then they will compile it into uh, a list of all 
the knowledge, skills, tasks, and related things, and they will be compiled into uh, the examination specification. Examination specification is developed by another team. The result of the market research is given to the examination specification team. They divide the, all those skills and knowledge and tasks and all that which, which had been received from the market research into specific tasks a, a risk manager should be able to do. So this, beca this becomes your syllabus. This examination specification is the examination content outline. This is what you are going to be preparing because this is the document based on which a next step exam development is done. Ex those who are responsible for developing the exam, who are responsible for writing the questions for the exam, they only look at this document examination specification. It is not from, um, it is not necessary that all the exam questions are based on PMBOK are the risk management standard. This could be from anywhere, any book in the world, but basically that will be in alignment with the examination specification. Whatever is written in the examination specification, that would be converted into questions. Uh, once uh, a new certification has been developed, it, uh, and it has never been done before, so they will conduct a pilot, and in this pilot, uh, they may give some rebate to the people who are guinea pigs for this pilot and uh, you know uh, they may be exempted the fee or maybe they they are uh, you know exempted half of the fee or something like that but somehow anybody who is appearing in the pilot uh, does not know whether he passes or fails because there is no criteria of pass fail uh, at the time of pilot uh, the result of pilot comes uh, comes out after a month or so it is not instantaneous that you know that you have uh, cleared the exam actually based on the the, the pilot uh, candidates their their exam uh, their uh, their paper how do they attempt their paper that will determine the difficulty level of the exam which should be kept for the pass score after one month they decide uh, what should be the pass score and then uh, they draw a line and they pass those people who are beyond above that line and uh, they fail those people who are behind that line and ultimately this credential is now released once a credential is released then it goes through continuous custom credential care meaning what you maintain your credentials and you know new changes to from the market research may come in role delineation study may be conducted after five to seven years Again, the exam specification will change and new exam development, but next time there will be no pilot. Pilot is only done only once when a new certification is floated. After that, pilot is skipped and you can keep revising the certification. So there are two reasons why a certification is to be revised. Number one, uh, due to the market research or the role delineation study. Uh, the role delineation study means that the role of a risk manager in the market has changed and market demands now a different kind of risk manager so therefore new study has to be carried out to ascertain the new requirements for the risk manager and then design the exam specifications accordingly and once that happens the exam will change moreover uh, that is that means exam content has changed so as i said exam content has not changed for last many years since 2012 exam content has not changed so it is very likely that very soon because it takes about five to seven years so uh, if it takes seven years 2019 is the seven years off so it is almost the time the role division study must have been complete and maybe the exam is going to change this year or next year so this is my likelihood i'm just thinking about it so Anyways, uh, exam can change in this situation. And number two, if there is a new standard and you know there is a new standard. So risk management standard has come afresh and therefore this is also going to impact. So um, it would be a very uh, good guess that uh, uh, within six to 12 months, the exam will change. But if you are appearing in the exam in the near future and there is, you are not going to wait very long, then this is okay. You can. You can go for it. This is not a very difficult exam, especially when you have already qualified PMP. Uh, because uh, as, as I said before, P 
the this exam is not only the exam of risk management pmi rmp is basically a pmp plus type of exam in which all your knowledge of project management is tested with a specialization in risk management so some questions maybe you know more than 50 percent questions are about risk management but still they may ask you questions about human resource about communication about other things you know related to project management how do you apply uh, again uh, I, I have explained it yesterday Khayam um, and Moeed has already uh, applied for PMP they know uh, it's only the matter for Shahid and Shahid I have explained to you that you have to first get the membership if you want to go for it and you, you do have a membership I remember you have the you already have a membership so you just have to go through the process I described yesterday you just have to wait for you know within the 90 days you submit your application and then ultimately if there is an audit get your audit cleared as soon as possible uh, submit your payment appear in the exam and all that and then keep renewing your certification continuously okay and uh, this also I have described uh, there are 170 questions in three and a half hours so this is a bit lighter than PMP from the number of questions question point of view 170 questions in uh, three and a half hours uh, forget about the 20 questions which are unscored because that is just a confusion uh, you don't know which those 20 questions would be therefore it's not your concern before I can start the content outline um, if you have any questions till now, please speak. Raise your hand, please. Jimoid. Sir, it's uh, probably not a question, but uh, rather a comment that uh, I recently have uh, uh, registered and got my application approved for, for PMI RMP. Wonderful. Uh, so uh, the thing the point you were making that means it's been seven years and probably in year 2019 they are gonna change the exam uh -huh. so means when uh, filling in that application and uh, when I was going through the system asked me that uh, means if I want to appear for exam before July 31st or after July 31st so I, I guess that that is the time when they are uh, mm. the exam. Must be, must be. That must be the case. So you said yeah, yeah. July 31st. Okay. Yes, sir. So you, you all have very less time. <laughs> May, June. Uh, are you all ready for, um, for the exam before 31st of July? You know. Okay. Sir, I definitely plan to appear before 31st of July because um, otherwise I will be traveling. Mm -hmm. So I think I'll definitely be appearing before 31st. Uh, I, I will suggest don't wait for 31st July. Target 30th of June. Right. Because uh, in July I will be traveling, so I will definitely be. Uh, doing it before this deadline so I yeah. will do it from this edition definitely exactly between 15 and 30th June is the okay date and probably that will not be a problem for you and Muid, what is, what is the date in your mind so there is uh, uh, perhaps in uh, uh, the month of July it means 10-15 uh, no don't do it of July. don't do it don't do it that is too close to the end date uh, try to do it in June the last half okay. of June. June is safe. Okay. Because if you enter July, then there is a likelihood that probably you may enter into the danger zone. Okay. Perfect. I get the idea. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so then, how much time we have after 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 July? You know, if uh, starting from first of August, if they are going to change the outline for work. Uh, so the next three months are critical I think you see they have actually decided that exam is changing on 31st of July this is what I uh, understand from what Moid has uh, told us so th this is decided by BMI yeah. that exam is changing on 31st of July that means 
that may be due to the standard that may be due to something else but whatever the standard is changing if the standard is changing then the 15 days prior to 31st of july are very dangerous because in that time many people will be applying for the risk management exam and when uh, the rush is more the failure rate goes high the threshold yeah threshold will, will be clear exactly so it is better to be safe and the safest time i can think of is the end of june but if you can't appear before end of june then i would suggest don't try in july move ahead into the august and maybe you know you give it mm. another 15 days uh, by the last two weeks of august you can uh, make an attempt but uh, can you not try it before that in june so the date in june is 27th uh -huh. so i'll probably do it on the 27th of june 27th of june and what what about your pmp yes because both both of the things that, that will take some time once you clear the pmp exam and then you apply for rmp it so will take some time Sir, so I don't have to read. No, no, I'm, do it. I'm talking to Shahid. Yeah, okay, sir. Sir, in my case, yes, I don't think so. I can do it uh, uh -huh. before July. So, to move to maybe August or maybe okay, end of okay. August. Okay. Uh, sir, but what do you think, sir? Uh, yesterday, you explained in the other session, even in this session, that uh, you don't suggest me to apply for RMP first. You know, uh -huh. rather I'll, I'll go first for the PMP. Yes. So, but uh, what do you think that, you know, if I only uh, RMP first, uh, so though the PMP area is also covered in this book, uh, you know, they uh, you know, they ask you questions from that area. Mm -hmm. So do you think we'll be covering all those things? Shahid, because you are att attending both the classes. PMP class and the RMP class, so yeah. the, uh, I think there should not be any problem with you. But those who are only attending the right. RMP class and they are not PMP, which there is none, um, so that, per no yeah, yeah. Uh, that person might have a problem. Uh, you see why I say PMP uh, makes it easier for you? Because at least you, you have attained a confidence level that you are already a PMP and you know everything about project management and PMP, okay? So that is a basic confidence in you. And with this confidence, you prepare for the risk management and uh, all the knowledge of project management, PMP, is behind you. So it is easier to pass RMP when you are already a PMP, although it is not a prerequisite. Um, as, as in your case, probably if you want to go for risk management first, um, I don't see any harm in it. Because you have, okay, great then. by that time, you have studied the PMP also and that thing also. So you can go for risk management. But uh, I don't know about you, how well you encapsulate uh, the whole concept. If you think you can you can prepare that well, then you can do as you wish. Go for RMP first or PMP first, no matter what, what, uh, what but it will still be good. Hmm. Okay, right. let's see, sir, inshallah. Uh, but just uh, start making up your mind. Because things will be clarified over the time. Uh, uh, you can start filling both the applications, but you can submit only one application at a time, right? If you submit the PMP application, your RMP will be on hold. If you submit the RMP application, PMP will be on hold. Therefore, you must take uh, this decision very carefully which exam you want to take first. You can fill both the applications. Got it? I got it, sir. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. Right, as I was telling you yesterday, the last thing we were talking about uh, uh, was uh, what are the five domains in which you will be tested. So, they are the risk strategy and planning. We have got five tasks and I'll be showing you those five tasks. And out of this risk strategy and planning, you will be getting 19 to 20% questions. Stakeholder engagement is another very important area. There are nine tasks, 19 to 20 percent questions. Risk process facilitation, seven tasks, 25 to 28 percent. Risk monitoring and reporting, seven tasks, 19 to 20 percent. 
and perform specialized risk analysis three tasks 14 to 16 percent now you may not find these exact headings of these domains in any of the risk management book you may find some of the heading maybe uh, there is some mention of risk strategy and planning there's some mention of stakeholder engagement and things like that uh, risk monitoring and control may be there but as such you will not find any book which will discuss these things exactly in this order therefore you must study and read the content very carefully as to know what are the topics you must you must prepare i'll show you each domain and each one of those tasks now and here you can make make up your mind so first domain is risk strategy and planning so we have got five tasks here and we will be getting 19 to 20 percent questions so uh, if you can work it out and tell me out of 170 questions how many questions are you expecting from this area yes calculate yes please raise your hands yes that means almost 34 questions 34 questions from risk strategy and planning that is 19 to 20 percent i calculated on 20 percent similarly uh, uh, we will keep calculating it for each area but 34 questions is a handsome number okay let's see we have got how many tasks here only five tasks divide 34 by 5 at least six to seven questions per task you will be getting are you sure you understand my point you see how important these tasks are each from each task you will be getting about five to six questions in the exam so let us see what can i get in uh, from uh, what kind of question can i get from task one so task one let's read it very carefully develop risk assessment processes and tools that quantify stakeholder risk tolerances in order to assess and determine risk thresholds for the project and set criteria for risk levels so let me use a pen and underline those things which are more important for us so first of all first important thing is risk assessment i must know what is risk assessment how is it done what are the processes and tools of risk assessment then uh, i need to quantify the risk tolerance i must understand what is risk to risk tolerance uh, how is it measured and how to quantify it and why do we do it to assess and determine the risk thresholds so i must understand what is the risk threshold and how do we determine the risk threshold and next is for the project and set criteria for risk levels so what are we what all we are doing risk assessment the processes and tools of risk assessment we are doing the um, uh, we are quantifying the risk tolerance we are trying to determine the risk threshold we are trying to uh, set criteria for risk levels i must understand what are different types of risk levels so if i am going to get about five questions from this task i know what are those questions these are the five headings which will make six questions yeah do you do you understand what i i mean absolutely sir so you have to 
you have to read through each one of the tasks and use your highlighter and underline and mark each and everything. Let me read the second task. I am still talking about the risk strategy and planning. Question, uh, task two, update risk policies and procedures using information such as lessons learned for, from projects and outputs of risk audits in order to improve risk management effectiveness. So let me underline for you. Risk policies and procedures. I have to update risk policies and procedures using what? Lessons learned from previous projects and outputs of risk audits. And what do I want to do? I want to improve risk management effectiveness. So dig down on each one of these topics. You will have one to two questions from each one of these items. What are the risk policies and procedures? Who makes them? Where? What are the? Are they at the organizational level? Are the project level? How to update them? These are various questions about risk policies and procedures. And then, uh, how do you use the lessons learned from old project? Means the previous projects, the risk registers, and the risk mitigation strategies and actions you have taken in the previous projects that might also be used in amending the policies and procedures for future and also uh, we might be using the outputs of the risk audits the risk audits we have conducted earlier on the earlier project and all of this is what are we trying to do we are trying to improve the risk management effectiveness so this points towards the proactivity in general not specific to this project but proactivity in general we should be proactive about risk management anyways so this is the matter of risk strategy and overall planning right so this is the second task are you satisfied with my explanation on this task yes sir okay let's look at a third task develop and recommend project risk strategy so here we are creating the project risk strategy and what is it based on based on the project objectives why in order to establish the outline of the risk management plan so here we have to got three major items number one uh, we have to develop and recommend project risk strategy what is project risk strategy how is it created uh, has it anything to do with the organizational strategy or what then how can I relate this project risk strategy with the project objectives? What are the project objectives? How do we relate the project risk strategy with the project objectives? And what are, why are we doing all this? Basically, to develop a risk management plan. So, what are the ingredients of risk management plan? What is the outline of risk management plan? What all should be included in risk management plan? This you must learn. So, these are three basic headings, and I can bet that you will get two questions from each of these headings. Then we have got task number four, produce risk management plan. Previously, you were trying to develop an outline of risk management plan. Now you have to produce the risk management plan. You have to create the risk management plan for the project on the basis of the inputs. And what are those inputs? Just underline them. Project information, external factors, stakeholder inputs, industry policies and procedures. And why are you doing all this? In order to define define fund and staff effective risk management process why for the project that align with the other project plans so here we have got a number of things we must understand how uh, uh, how to develop the risk management plan previously we have developed the outline of the risk management now did uh, the details of the risk management plan we must know uh, how to take in benefit of the inputs like what is project information what are external factors what are stakeholder input what are industry policies and procedures we must be very apt at the, all of these items and then we should be able to define fund and staff define fund and staff effective risk management processes for the project that align with other project plans other project plans are you know like scope management plan schedule management plan cost management plan. so all the management plans 
have to be integrated along with risk into the project management plan. So basically, we are trying to create a project management plan. So this is task number four. And task number five is establish evaluation criteria for risk management processes based on project baselines and objectives in order to measure effectiveness of the project risk process. So what do we do? Establish evaluation criteria. How to establish evaluation criteria? Do you know what is evaluation criteria? Evaluation criteria must be, you know, properly studied. Then for risk management processes, what all are the risk management processes? What is a project baseline? And what are the project objectives? And how to measure effectiveness of the project risk processes? We will study the project processes and all that, but not exactly in the order it is shown here. We are not having chapters like risk strategy and planning and like that. We are going to be studying um, the, uh, from the PMBOK also, from risk management standard also, new and old, both I will be referring. I'll tell you everything which is there in, in those standards. But extracting your, you know, uh, preparing for your exam, you have to extract data from all of these things and prepare yourself for that. So these are the five tasks of risk strategy and planning, but that is not all. In addition to these five tasks, just a minute. Okay, in addition to these five tasks, let me erase this. Okay. You must also, this is part of the same domain. You must have knowledge of certain things. What are these certain things? In addition to all that, so all your 34 questions, which we were saying about 34 questions you will get from it, they may be out of these, uh, these things also. Like, for example, do you understand what is continuous process improvement as applied to risk management? Knowledge, what are the knowledge management techniques for organizing and providing access to project risk information, metrics for measuring effectiveness of risk uh, project risk process, what is risk uh, attitude and what are the concepts of risk attitude, risk breakdown structures you must understand, risk tolerance concepts, barriers to effective risk management, project risk management inputs, tools, techniques and outputs, project risk contingency and management reserves, research and analysis techniques, basic strategy development methodologies, and these are the this is the knowledge you need to have about this domain and you need to have also skills in assessing the stakeholder risk tolerance and building stakeholder consensus so this is i am just charging you for that you know you must be very well prepared with all these topics if you want to pass the exam Therefore, this is just one domain I have just explained in front of you. Let me uh, move on to the next domain. And before that, if you have any comments, please raise hands. Ji Muid. I have just one question that, uh, especially for these uh, domains knowledge, so like there might not be only one resource to cover all these domains. Exactly. So. Do you recommend like means any like one consolidated resource that for the purpose of exam we could go through and uh, get all of these things uh, covered there because means uh, from the PMI reference material means if you go into that uh, what where are they referencing there might be 10 or 12 books mm -hmm. they're referencing over for all of these knowledge domains. Yes. So, yes. Actually, I have got a number of books electronically. I can share it, share them with you. Um, but you see, the crux of all those books that uh, I, I am teaching you, I am actually referring to so many books here in the in my lecture, and I will be covering most of the headings shown here. But there is no guarantee that I will be covering everything. Nobody can cover everything, right? So for that matter, uh, you must study something more maybe for example what i will do is for example i don't understand what are the barriers of effective risk management i'll try to find a book which explains about the barriers i will try to you know search on wiki 
for this specific thing which I don't understand or maybe if you can go to projectmanagement.com you will find a lot many lectures there online lectures articles and everything which is the best resource possible for project manager if you are a PMI member projectmanagement.com is free for you please try to use it there is a lot of material there you can always you know learn a lot many things and clarify a lot lot of your doubts uh, I will try my level best that I will clarify all your diet doubts and I will prepare for you for the risk management exam but for your own good if you need to clarify certain things which are not clarified through these my lecture you must you know approach uh, these resources and try to find answers to that you must be satisfied before sitting in the exam perfect sir all right yeah thank you and next uh, we move on to the, uh, uh, the other uh, domain that is stakeholder engagement as you already know those of you who are PMP you already understand what is the importance of stakeholder that PMI has added the 10th knowledge area for that stakeholder management is the 10th knowledge area so that is the importance of stakeholder and stakeholder we interact with uh, in, in a lot many places when we are collecting the requirements when we are uh, forming the activities when we are you know uh, 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 establishing the communications when we are uh, uh, identifying the risks and wherever there is an interaction point we have to get engaged with the stakeholders and not only we have to get engaged we have to keep them engaged we, have, we do not have to leave the stakeholders alone stakeholders must be always kept in confidence must be on board all the time and that is very important again you have got 19 to 20 percent questions that means about 34 questions are coming from stakeholder engagement and let us see from the perspective of risk management what are the various tasks we have nine tasks here so let us divide 34 by 9 that will be how much will be about three to four questions three to four questions from each task so let us see what is task number one promote a common understanding of value of risk management so i underline value of risk management value what is the value of risk management how do we do that by using interpersonal skills interpersonal skills do you know what are interpersonal skills how to exercise them in order to foster an appropriate level of shared accountability responsibility and risk ownership how do you share accountability responsibility and risk ownership you must have a very good concept about these things right so uh, probably you see you can see that i have underlined five items here and there could be easily three to four questions coming out of it next task is train coach and educate stakeholders so i underline train coach and educate stakeholders in what in risk principles and processes why in order to create shared understanding of principles and processes and foster engagement in risk management so this one single sentence can be subdivided into three to four parts and we have three to four questions coming out of it so that is the importance of each and every task postmortem do the postmortem of each task break it open into small little parts and then make a list of all these items and ensure that you understand each and everything and keep ticking whatever you have understood so this is how you prepare for risk management task three coach project team members in implementing risk responses uh, sorry risk processes in order to ensure the consistent application of risk processes so previously we would be trained coach and educated the stakeholders now it is talking us uh, uh, telling us to coach the project team members now we are talking about the project team members they have to be coached on what on how to implement the risk response uh, risk process 
Why? As to ensure that we have consistent application of risk processes. So I can clearly identify three portions of this task and we can have about three to four questions coming out of it. Task number four, assess stakeholder risk tolerance using processes and tools. So here we are talking about assessing the stakeholder risk tolerance. I must understand what is risk tolerance and how to assess the risk tolerance of the stakeholder. How? Using the processes and tools. And what are these tools? Interviewing the stakeholders, reviewing the historical stakeholder behaviors. And why do we do that? To identify risk project risk threshold when i am i am uh, assessing the stakeholder risk tolerance i am trying to establish the project risk threshold right so there are four or five items we i have underlined here and these things can come out as questions fifth one identify stakeholder risk attitudes this is one identify stakeholder risk attitudes cognitive biases i'll talk about the cognitive biases using stakeholder analysis techniques so yes stakeholder analysis techniques this is also important in order to manage stakeholder expectations this is also important and responses throughout the life of the project so what do you need to do you need to identify the stakeholder stakeholder risk attitude their cognitive biases Stakeholder analysis techniques must be known to you and you must manage the stakeholder expectations and responses and that is throughout the life of the project. <clears throat> I hope you are you are you are with me on that. I'm sorry, I twice. Uh, how long was it that I could not be heard? You were cut off, I think, on uh, the task five. Okay, then we lost. And it's uh, been like okay, uh, fine, fine. two minutes. Like, right, right. Uh, yeah. Okay, so I'll I'll um, I'll explain task five once again. In task five, uh, uh, we let me have the highlighter. In task five. We have to identify the stakeholder risk attitude. We'll talk naturally. We'll talk about what the attitude is. We have to identify the, their cognitive biases. We have to use the stakeholder analysis techniques. And why? We have to manage stakeholder expectations and responses throughout the life of the project. So you see. Uh, if we understand what the attitude is, risk attitude is, how to identify the risk attitude, how, how to cater for the cognitive biases of the stakeholders, uh, what are the different stakeholder analysis techniques, and how to manage the stakeholder expectations uh, and responses throughout the life of the project. Is, that means it is consistent. Throughout the life of the project, I will keep doing that. I have the interaction with the stakeholders throughout the life of the project. So this point is important from that perspective let's uh, let's see what is what is the next task task number six engage stakeholders in risk of prioritization process previously we were identifying the stakeholder we were trying to identify the uh, risk uh, risk attitude of the stakeholder now what we are trying is we are engaging the stakeholder now we are keeping the stakeholder on board while we are doing the risk prioritization process just a minute okay while we are doing the risk prioritization process based on based on the same stakeholder risk tolerance which we have established already 
and other relevant criteria if any in order to optimize the consensus regarding priorities we cannot do the prioritization on our own it is not the prioritization of the project manager it is basically risk tolerance is for the stakeholder if stakeholder is not going to pay for that then how can i take that risk therefore i have to get the stakeholder on board engage him and involve him in the risk prioritization process and establish a consensus on what can be borne and what cannot be borne so again in task 6 you can see there are a number of items underlined and we can have a number of questions coming out of this task number 7 provide risk related recommendations to stakeholders provide risk related recommendations to stakeholders regarding risk strategy and planning this is what it is regarding risk strategy and planning risk process facilitation risk reporting specialized risk tasks by using what effective communication techniques in order to support effective risk based decision making so here there are a lot many things we have to provide the recommendations to the stakeholder and about what about the risk strategy and planning about the risk process facilitation about the risk reporting about specialized risk tasks and all of this should be done through an effective communication technique so i must understand what are the effective ways of communicating with the stakeholder and why are we doing all this in order to support effective risk based decision making again the matter is same we are trying to keep the stakeholder engaged and involved in the decision making process about the risks so this was task number 7 task number 8 promote risk ownership there must be a owner for every risk it is not the project manager who is who owns all the risks or it, you cannot dump it on the stakeholder that you are the risk owner no risk ownership must be allocated specifically for each and every risk by proactive communicating roles you must tell that this is your responsibility you are the owner of this risk and the person who is owner of the risk must explicitly know it they the, know about his roles his responsibilities and engaging project team members who will be working with him on that risk in the development of risk responses naturally these people who will be working on that risk must also be working on development of the risk responses in order to improve the risk response execution so this team who will be responsible there must be an owner in the team this team who is responsible for this risk must be responsible for identification of the risk must be responsible for the you know development of responses for the risk and for the execution of the risk responses so uh, this task number eight is basically promoting the risk ownership task number nine lays with the stakeholders of other projects why are we raising with the stakeholders of other projects by using effective communication techniques and sharing information on project risk performance why in order to inform them of implications of their projects so interconnectivity of the projects are for that matter if a pro if the risk in this project can somehow uh, affect another project then probably we have to lay with the stakeholders of those other projects as if these the proper communication can be established and this information can be shared amongst various projects so as far as stakeholder engagement is concerned these are the nine tasks but as i said before this is not all we have some knowledge and skills also to prepare for and that would be the knowledge of information resources both internal and external that is the organizational process as it's an enterprise environmental factors uh, this might not be uh, very significant for you Shahid, because you have not heard about them but once we talk about these things in uh, project management you will be much more clear so we'll talk about them here also but uh, uh, right now i am not explaining anything i'm just defining the syllabus then project performance information 
you must understand what it is stakeholder sensitivity analysis models what are the stakeholder sensitivity analysis models training and coaching techniques types of stakeholder risk attitudes included but not limited to risk seeking risk tolerant or risk averse kind of stakeholders group decision making group creativity techniques like you know brainstorming nominal group techniques delphi technique idea mind mapping and affinity diagrams etc these are the various group te creativity techniques and we'll talk about these techniques as well and what are the skills you should have for accomplishment of this domain assessing stakeholder risk tolerances the, their appetite and their attitude collaborating with the stakeholders managing teams in multicultural environment because this is a very common thing now because uh, we are managing projects across the borders multicultural environments so managing teams in multicultural environment is also important here the humans have skill in that and influencing the change so this completes our domain number 2 any questions so far no sir i don't have any okay wonderful no questions sir wonderful shai sahab are you on board i saw you yes sir yes sir i'm i'm here okay i saw you disconnected for some time yeah um, i have to drop my daughter so but i was on mobile um, okay no problem no problem okay let's move on and uh, see the third domain you see i am not explaining anything i am not at all explaining anything we have not not yet started uh, the hardcore material i am just explaining the syllabus third is risk process facilitation and it is 25 to 28% how does it come out to be uh about 42 questions 42 43 questions i mean 42 to 50 questions are going to be from risk process facilitation and we have got how many tasks here seven so this is going to be about seven questions per task you will be getting about seven questions per task so what are the tasks number one apply risk assessment processes and tools in order to quantify stakeholder tolerances and determine risk levels first of all apply risk assessment processes and tools then quantify stakeholder risk tolerances determine risk levels we have already studied some of these things we have talked about risk levels we have we have been talking about the risk tolerances but if you remember there we were quali qualitatively analyzing the risk tolerances here it is asking you to quantify stakeholder risk tolerances because now we are going in depth and we are applying the various risk assessment processes and tools which we use in the very first domain risk assessment we we studied in the very first domain but here we are going in depth risk assessment through processes and tools so these are the three basic heading but you may have about six questions coming out of it task number two facilitate risk identification now we are getting into the processes identification of the risk is a process so facilitate risk identification using a variety of techniques what are the various ways and tools and techniques through which you can identify the risks why in order to enable the project team and the stakeholders you are enabling the project team and the stakeholders to understand and determine the risk exposure of the project so the main crux is to understand the risk exposure of the project the overall risk of the project you actually i you are aiming at establishing how risky the whole project is this is going to be your end result but risk identification must be so thorough that it should be able to yield this benefit ultimately third task here is facilitate the risk team evaluations 
sorry, project team evaluations. So you have to facilitate project team evaluations of the identified risk attributes using qualitative and quantitative tools and techniques in order to prioritize the risks for response planning. So we are guiding the identified risk risks to proper thorough analysis through qualitative and quantitative tools and techniques and ultimately prioritizing the risks for developing the risk responses. So this is the complete path. This is the complete flow how the risk will be processed. Again, you can see you can easily get three to four questions out of it. Task number four, facilitate the development of an aligned risk response strategy. What we are saying, aligned risk response strategy. We had to create a risk response, but the strategy should be aligned and related risk actions by risk owners from the information gathered during risk analysis in order to ensure timely and defined action when required. So we are here talking about the response. Task number four is about the response. So you must have an aligned risk response strategy and the related risk actions to be taken by the risk owners, which you have already assigned from the information gathered during during the risk analysis you have done, the qualitative, quantitative analysis you have done that has enriched you how to how and what to do about this risk to ensure timely and defined action. So you have you uh, through analysis, you have come to the understanding what is to be done with this risk. Who is the risk owner? And is and the overall risk response strategy is in my mind. And now I have to guide the timely and defined action when the risk is about to occur. occur. Task number five, facilitate the formulation of project contingency reserve based on the risk exposure of the project in order to have the capability and resources to respond to realized risks. So what here we are talking about is formulation of project contingency reserve. Now this is the contingency reserve. Project contingency reserve is for any unforeseen. This is for those risks which could not have been contemplated, which could not have been identified. But those reserves are going to impact the risk exposure. So based on the risk exposure of the project in order to have the capability and resources to respond to realized risks. So those risks which have realized how we are going to take action for them. So this contingency will take care of the realized risks. Next is task number six. Provide risk data to cost and schedule analysts estimators to ensure that project risk is properly reflected in cost and schedule estimate for the project. Actually, this is very interesting that whatever you are planning in risk is going to take some time, take some time, actions, actions you are going to take, they will take some time and they will take some money. So this must be represented in your cost and schedule plans. So the risk data must be provided to the cost and schedule analysts or the estimators to ensure that project risk is properly reflected in your cost and schedule estimates for the project. So this must be properly integrated. Task number seven, use scenarios to validate potential risk responses and evaluate key dependencies and requirements in order to enhance the likelihood of project success. Use scenarios means that you have to conduct what if scenarios and you have to pose various situations to yourself. What if this occurs, then what will I do? What if this occurs, then what will I do? So you will validate the potential risk responses which could have been taken in a specific scenario. At least they must be recorded and evaluated. Their key dependencies established and the requirements of that in order to enhance the likelihood of project success. 
because if I have proactively defined all these scenarios, then I am uh, well prepared to encounter these phase, these uh, risks. What do the knowledge I need to have? First of all, basic risk identification tools and techniques for both threats and opportunities, positive and negative risk, both I have to have. I have to be highly proactive. I have to be highly creative, including but not limited to brainstorming, which is a creativity tool, checklists, prompt lists, assumptions, constraints, analysis, interviews, questionnaires, cause and effect analysis, SWOT analysis, document review, affinity diagrams, lessons learned review, and so on and so forth. And I can even take help from the previous or similar projects. Basic qualitative risk analysis tools and techniques like, you know, uh, limited to probability impact matrices, risk scoring, risk breakdown structure analysis, root cause analysis, Pareto prioritization analysis, and risk matrix trend analysis. We will study all this. We will study all this. Don't be bothered about it. Then we have basic quantitative risk analysis tools, which include the Monte Carlo, decision tree. Uh, then we have the heuristics and other dynamic sources, risk response strategy types, contingency management tools and techniques, risk monitoring and control techniques, group decision making, group creativity, which include, as, as we said before, brainstorming, nominal group techniques, LP, idea mind mapping, and affinity diagram, etc. So we'll talk about more. Most of these things, if at all, I miss out any one of these items and uh, you can ask them, I can find it out and discuss it with you or you can find it on your own. The skills you have for this domain is using analytical software tools for project risk management. You must be able to manage teams in multicultural environments. You must have the skill of estimating probability and impact of all the identified risk. So these are the various skills you require to have. And if you have this, you have complete knowledge of domain number three. So this content is basically your exam content. Fourth domain is risk monitoring and reporting. Again, 19 to 20 questions, meaning about 34 questions. Uh, seven, uh, seven tasks are here. Again, three to four questions from each task. Task number one, document and periodically update project risk information using standard tools. First of all, we need document periodically update project risk information. And using standard tools like risk register, risk databases, and techniques like maintain a single current repository of all project risk information. That is called a risk register. Coordinate with project manager. That is the second task. Coordinate with the project manager using communication techniques. Coordination, communication techniques, and why? To integrate risk management throughout the project. Task number three, create Periodic standard and custom reports create periodic standard and custom reports using risk related metrics as specified in the risk management plan because we will be following whatever is written in the risk management plan in order to communicate risk management activities and status. Task number four monitor risk response metrics by analyzing risk response performance information and present to key stakeholders in order to ensure a resolution of risk and develop additional risk response strategies to address residual and secondary risk. So this is very complicated. We are talking about uh, monitoring the risk response metrics. We are talking about, uh, you know, analyzing the risk response performance information. Uh, then presenting it to the key stakeholders uh, resolution of the uh, to ensure the resolution of the risk and developing additional risk responses response strategies to address residual or secondary risk that is that means that the risks which had the responses which we had already created they might have left out some risk intentionally or unintentionally so 
the remaining remaining risk is called residual risk so if you need to treat that you have to create your risk response strategy to deal with that moreover there are secondary risks which are the risks which are you know hidden behind the original risk and once this risk occurs only then the secondary risk become visible they are not residual risk secondary risk is not residual risk this is a full fledged risk but it cannot be seen with before this risk in front uh, vanishes task number 5 analyze risk process performance against established metrics in order to drive risk process improvement so how to drive risk process improvement analyze risk performance improvement against established metrics so this is what is task, task number 5 uh, g uh, g shayad i am sorry sir uh, no no it's okay sir uh so i'm going through but i don't know it uh, maybe it uh, later down the road it will be clarified but apparently it seems that uh, you know all of these tasks in all of these groups or you can say domains uh do all of these tasks have any name like you know in cmp we have 49 processes so yeah. you know the similar table like the knowledge area then you know process groups or, or domain so that would be very much easy you know so identifying these tasks that this activity is called mm -hmm. task 3 or task 4 or do we have any specific name uh, yes of course we, of we, have, we have got the processes we have got the inputs tools and techniques and everything we, that is going to come forward but I, because we are it's just discussing the syllabus. syllabus we are just discussing the syllabus is a descriptive is written in description basically all so they wrote it like this you know they identified these as these are the actually this is just the guidance for those who are writing the questions for the exam the people who are writing the question they can see this and then out of these things they can make certain different types of question this is not for the people who are preparing for the exam for preparing for the exam you will have a lot of organized data in the respective guide or the standard but here you you must be able to relate it with this because it is not necessary that whatever is given in the standard is uh, given here also this might be more i am just showing you the syllabus as if you know that it you may get questions even beyond the standard you get my point okay okay that's why you must read this carefully and underline these things as if you can find it into the standard and uh, you can also find that what you could not locate and what you do not locate you must understand uh, that you have to learn about it also because in exam they can ask anything it is not only the pmbok or the risk management standard they are going to be asking questions about they will ask anything and everything from you okay. you have to be extra careful but don't be confused with whatever we are studying now we are we are just covering uh, the standard nothing more i mean just covering the syllabus okay okay sir i understand then is uh, the sixth task of the fourth domain that is update the risk management plan using relevant internal and external inputs to, in order to keep the plan current naturally updation to the risk management plan will occur task number 7 capture risk lessons learned through comprehensive review of the project risk management plan risk registers risk audits risk process performance reports other associated reports in order to incorporate into future risk planning the knowledge you need to have here is about the continuous improvement process about the quality management knowledge management techniques for organizing and providing access to the risk information alternative formats for project risk reports for example top risk list risk transition to issues response plans behind schedule risk triggers risk outcomes requirements for risk register data fields data uh, sorry risk statement construction how the statement is constructed i'll teach you most of the things which are given here most of the things risk response activity construction risk response matrix risk process performance matrix risk assessment analysis matrix risk management reserves and there are no specific skills you need to learn about this domain 
Coming to the last and final domain, we have only three tasks here. This is perform specialized risk analysis. Task number one is evaluate the attributes of identified risks using advanced quantitative tools and specialized qualitative techniques in order to estimate overall risk exposure of the project. That is the ultimate mission which I mentioned earlier that now we are going in depth. But we have already mentioned when we identified the risk, we said that we have to, you know, somehow get a picture of the overall risk exposure of the project as if we understand how risky is the project. And naturally, we will decide uh, based on that how much action we need to take on it. So evaluate the attributes of all identified risks using advanced quantitative and qualitative techniques in order to estimate overall risk exposure. That is number one. Number two is analyze risk data produced during the project using statistical analysis and expert judgment in order to determine weaknesses and strengths of risk strategy and process and recommend process improvement when indicated. You see, we will do the catharsis. We will uh, make amendments to the risk strategy even. The risk management plan, risk strategy, basic processes, they all can be questioned and amended. So this all is dependent on the statistical analysis we'll be conducting later. Third task is perform specialized risk analysis using advanced tools and techniques in order to support stakeholder decision making for the project. Then we have uh, to have the knowledge about the advanced risk identification tools and techniques and what could they be. Uh, you, you, there is a list, list given for, uh, here. Force field analysis, scenario planning, future thinking, visualization, Delphi groups. Nominal group techniques. So some of uh, some of the things you have already heard about but some are new terminologies we'll try to explain each and every one of them then advanced what are the advanced quantitative risk analysis tools and techniques that could include integrated cost schedule analysis advanced monte carlo analysis system dynamics bounty analysis analytical hierarchy process risk based earned value analysis risk based critical chain analysis and multi factor regression analysis modeling techniques advanced risk metrics analysis I am not trying to make you afraid. You do not need to learn everything. You do not need to be master of everything. But at least you should know the definition of each and every item. The most important items you must be know, must know how to use them. But at least those which you don't don't uh, have never heard about it, then at least learn about their definition. Then are the tools and techniques for identifying and analyzing overall project risk. And what are they? Risk efficiency index risk tolerance analysis, risk reserve analysis, risk metric trend analysis, risk taxonomy, risk connectivity analysis, again Monte Carlo analysis against overall project objectives, project risk surveys and correlation analysis, etc. Basic and advanced statistics is to be, you know, you must have the knowledge about it. Estimation tools and techniques you need to know are like uh, cost benefit analysis, analogous estimation, parametric estimation, bottom-up estimation, advanced theory of heuristics and other sources of, of cognitive bias. I'll talk about it. Variance and earned value analysis you must know. And the skills you need to have for this domain is converting qualitative information into risk data, building representative risk models and managing and interpreting quantitative and qualitative data. So this is what the five domains are. I know and I understand this looks very uphill task. This looks very difficult. A lot of terminology has been spoken, but this is the syllabus. So after having exposure to all of these terms, you must be a, a bit confused or sometime, some of the terms which you already know might have made you comfortable that I know this much. But one thing is sure that you must have realized that you do not know all. And therefore, now when we are studying for risk management, you must ensure that you capture all what I'm saying. Moreover, cross check whatever be, is being taught with this syllabus and see, ask questions when 
it, the requisite topic comes up. So that way you will be able to capture as much as possible. If I can't explain something or if we do not have knowledge of certain tool or technique, then we can always go back and find about it on internet in some books or whatsoever. But you must be comfortable. At least we should know the definition of anything which we don't didn't know earlier. In, on top of all, uh, there are certain core knowledge and skill which you anyways need to know about risk management. For example, what are the project risk management processes and what are the frameworks and theory uh, as per the pre practice standard project risk management, which I'll be covering. Basic project management theory, methodology and practice as given in PMPOK -OK guide, which I'll be covering. Risk principles and guidelines as described in ISO 31000, we'll be referring to that as well. Communication tools, techniques, models and channels, facilitation tools and techniques, negotiation tools and techniques, leadership theory as it relates to risk management, organizational theory as it relates to risk management, risk taxonomy, PMI code of ethics and professional conduct. These and the skills you have need to have like effective oral, graphical and written presentation. Tailoring information for all levels of stakeholders. Conducting effective interviews. This must be your skill. Gathering, managing, analyzing and validating data. Problem solving you must know. Active listening. Conflict resolution. Expressing complex and abstract information. Influencing without authority and coaching and mentoring. You know, a lot many things you might have been confirmed uh, in, in the various tasks. It asks you to coach and train and do this, do the conflict resolution, active listening, uh, creative thinking and all that. So you see all of these things are summarized into these core knowledge and skills. So this is all about uh, the syllabus. Your exam content is this and uh, um, once again, I would say I, I don't want to get you confused. Actually, I wanted to put everything right in front of you. This is what you are getting into. If you are ready for that, then we will study each one of these things. And ultimately, I can assure you that you will be very well prepared to sit for PMP, PMI, RMP exam. And inshallah, you will pass. So if you have any comments to make, any questions to ask, these are the last moments. Let's ask those questions. Do you know? Sir, I'm good. A little overwhelmed, but <laughs> good. Okay, Ham. Sir, ye, uh, although it's like Moit said, it's a bit overwhelming, mm -hmm. but uh, I was just going through a couple of simulators. Uh -huh. Actually, it's not that overwhelming. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I guess uh, it's more than what meets the eye. But I think, uh, like you said, inshallah, once we uh, do the course by the by 25th, inshallah, we'll be more and more comfortable that this exactly. mountain can. Actually, the first thing is you must uh, you must know what you are facing. You must not take it easy. I know people who, uh, you know, just start attempting questions and after they have attempted few questions, right? They say, oh, we are ready for the RMP. They just go and sit in the exam and then they fail. And when uh, they ask the reason, the reason is same. You didn't know the, you didn't uh, work on the syllabus. You didn't really prepare for the RMP exam. You went to the exam with PMP prep. That's it. So PMP prep can get you some questions right, all right, but this is beyond PMP. This is more than PMP. You must prepare especially for risk management. And uh, you know, naturally, we are covering all the same syllabus. I'm covering it from PMB. OK, I'm covering it from risk management uh, standard and all other things. But not only PMB. OK is enough for that. A PMB, a PMB. OK cannot, cannot get you through RMP exam. <laughs> Ji, Shahid, have any last comments? Uh, no, sir, I'm I'm good. Uh, but uh, apparently, it seems you know there are so many interconnected uh, explanation or uh, uh, the items what you have explained uh, or the groups or the tasks. 
they are similar but somehow they are different maybe uh, one of the parameter in each of the items you know it's uh, it's very interrelated yeah uh, but uh, i believe by the time once we will go and dig down deep for each of the area that will be much and much clearer to me yeah yeah, yeah of course uh, as per am yeah, yeah this is one thing uh, the other thing is sir that uh, if you can share these slides uh, or any link so where we can uh, download the content the books or some other reference materials like okay. i don't know about uh, rmp but in case of pmp like we have other books uh, rita or uh, so many other books which are very helpful yeah. especially for exam preparation so for uh, rmp the actually that for rmp i don't find there is any good book except for uh, there was one book by uh, rita malkai's company but it was later discontinued because they said uh, this is not for uh, rmp exam anymore uh, there was a reason behind it okay so that book is existing but uh, that is not for rmp exam anymore uh, but uh, uh, you can find other resources but i can share a lot many things with you so uh, let me make a folder into one drive and when it is completed and i'll keep putting all these things there then i can, i'll share you i'll uh, i'll start sharing by to, by tomorrow all right all right okay sir and you are uploading these uh, videos in your uh, i i believe in your youtube group right um, uh, still i have not done that but i will do that uh, okay okay but it it will have a restricted access only to you people everybody will not be okay. able to access it yeah okay if you, there are no more questions i think we should call it a day and uh, uh, see you tomorrow at the same time um, um is it is the time okay if, for everyone 9:30 to 11:30 uh, yes okay um, uh, shaiza we were thinking if we can bring it to 9 pm but uh, that would be not good for you huh? yeah sir 7 pm is uh, like today if tar was uh, 6 ah. 52 So okay. in eight minutes, uh, Aftar and then uh, Salah, it would be you know. No, no, I understand. I understand. <laughs> so it will be nine thirty to eleven thirty. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. Take care, please. Yeah. The office. Thank you, everyone.